Today is Saturday, which means that Kachan and Todoroki don't have to go to provisional license training. That is great so, news. That means I can actually join the crew. Together, we're all working on our upcoming performance. Yeah, it's time for band practice. Now, let's jam! Murder them with music! I'm still impressed by Tokugami's guitar playing. Loosen up, Midoriya! You've it's got just to a reminder that these kids are, are so good, they can just do anything. It's a lock, they can literally do anything, they're good so at anything. Rigid, so get that body moving! <laughs> I love this musical overlap. Like, this dramatic music has been used for so many fights. Here What's we are using it for their dance routine. Oh, hey, Togeda! Whoops. That's the angriest I've ever seen him. Hey guys, I brought a peach for ya! <laughs> okay. Alright, Mirio. So is this her writing lyrics or something like that? Is there gonna be like a, a debut song? Todoroki and Bakugo had so many of the, the greatest intro moments. <laughs> she got it. Now she's running back to school to tell everyone. I'm actually looking forward to the performance. I'm wondering like how it's gonna go down. Is what's his name? The gentleman gonna attack in the middle of it? Wait, don't tell me you've got a secret kid. That dress looks great on you. Of all the assumptions to jump to. Well, hello. I mean, you couldn't have picked a better group of people to introduce her to. Man, you're gonna be a looker, aren't you? No, 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 stop. Oh, right. She's kind of shy. Don't worry, Ari. Everyone has that reaction to Minetta at first. It's Ari! Oh, wait. We were never actually introduced, were we? Okay, crew. Why don't we right. grab a little break? It's tea time! Why does this look like, like so much damn fun? <laughs> Gold Tips Imperial? I would like to join their school and participate in this festival. Who's that? Don't tell me your temporary leave from school is because you have a kid now. Why is everyone jumping to the same conclusion? You're walking around like you've got nothing to do while we're all hustling. Ari, are you okay? I thought it was that dragon from before. You saw a dragon? Oh yeah, the uh, oh, the lady, yeah. You're talking about Ryukyu. Ryukyu, that's what I said. Class B stellar performance is gonna make you wish you hadn't even shown up. We're doing Romeo and Juliet and the Prisoner of Azkaban, The Return of the King. Wow, that is a lot of... Original play written by <laughs> <you're> <laughs> that's a lot of concepts in one epic. movie. You forgot Star Wars, but okay. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of intrigued by this performance idea. Romeo and Juliet, The Prisoner of Azkaban, Return of the King. That, that's worth a watch. Especially since, you know, it's completely original. Bring a hanky to wipe the tears from your eyes when you realize how superior we are! <laughs> <laughs> I see the rest of the class has, has joined in. Well, she's off prepping for the beauty pageant right now, so... Oh, there's a beauty, beauty pageant. What? It's kind Don't of tell Mineta. Even mean to enter. Don't tell Mineta. <laughs> Mr. Aizawa didn't say anything about there being some kind of beauty pageant. Well, it's too late to enter. As if Deku was gonna enter. <laughs> You've got a flashy quirk and you're so nice! And you're... <laughs> so bow... He means balanced. <laughs> but even with all that, you were still only runner-up! Who's the winner? Do we know her? Who is it? Baby me Ken Ranzaki from Support Course Class 3G! Her? She's very long eyelashes. That's why this year I'll definitely come in first. It's my last chance! You can do it! Right, they're seniors. <sighs> this is a lot for Ari. I feel like everyone's super worried about how she's doing, and a lot of that's about her power, but I can imagine how there would be overwhelming elements to it, given her background, but to me it just seems like such a wonderful thing, like all these great, good-hearted, talented, attractive people treating me with genuine kindness, you know, and taking time out for me and stuff. It's just beautiful. And I feel like she's going to hone in directly on that. She's going to see what's important. And this is going to continue to be a wonderful experience for her. I don't really see the downside. Maybe the attack is the danger. I don't know. I hear it's a highlight every year. Yes. Where's baby's girl? There she the is. Festival is the support Hot right? time to shine. <gasps> Wait. Whoa. That's my, That's my big my baby. Super cute baby number yeah. Two <laughs> You might have some grease on you. <laughs> so much. I'm filthy, but I can't waste time bathing. Oof. So, what do you think about our school, Ari? How do I join? I can see how hard everyone is working on the festival, and I do want to know how it all turns out. That's what? cute. <laughs> it seems like we made the right choice. That was a lot of cheese. Is he a mouse? I thought he was some kind of bear. A lot of cheese in this <laughs> arc. That's a power combo. Ayama and Nezu. Nezu does the thinking, Ayama does the twinkling. They'd be unstoppable in their quest for cheese. You're putting everyone here at risk. It's tough. I firmly believe Nezu carries that a heavy weight on his shoulders. Times we're living in, the students need an event like this. If an alarm sounds, even if it's a false one, we'll have to shut down and evacuate. Those were the terms the police agreed upon. That's a, a fair compromise, though, I guess. We even let Hound Dog off his leash to play. Hey, <laughs> the most inspirational speaker of all time. Deku, what performance? We're doing a big live concert. Oh, you don't know about the I'm best on the part? Dance team. We're all gonna dance and sing and stuff. 
I'm off. Okay, Gotta just so you know, I'm crew. looking forward to seeing you get down too. Oh, we all are. We're all excited to see Deku get down. <laughs> I respect Nezu's decision to think about the student's well-being. I mean, it might seem trivial, but I really think there's something about rest and just general well-being that makes you better at everything else. I mean, being in a good place all around just has a way of strengthening everything, I think. And I also think it's somewhat of a mistake to think that we can, like, overpower our base needs. And they, they're kids and they need socialization and they need fun. They need play. They need stress relief. So for me, even though there are risks, I feel like it's a very humane thing for Nezu to decide and also speaks well of his courage because I feel like most people in that situation would sort of cater to the pressure they're receiving you know the political pressure or whatever but he seems like the kind of guy or mouse or whatever that not only can think about other people as real people but also seems to be able to shoulder the responsibility and accept the consequences himself it'll be really interesting if he turns out to be the spy <laughs> I mean that was my first thought way back when the, the spy concept came up just because so often the, the extreme rational rationality thing is connected to villainy for a good reason I think though Nezu through actions like this has also shown he's capable of great heart and then a week later, it happened. What happened? What Victoria. happened? Victoria. You messed up your dance practice? You're fired from the dance team. He did mess up his dance practice. Can't say I'm too shocked, given his moves, but not gonna lie, it's a little disappointing. I was looking forward to seeing him dance. You're fired from the dance team. You gotta hear it twice. You've been scouted by another team! The cleanup crew? special effects now. Oh. But we don't have a fly system in the gym, so they want someone with a power quirk to move him by hand. This seems like a waste of Decker's talents. Wait, I know. What if he flies around? We can swing him over the audience's heads! Deku could always teach him how to fly. We're still not talking about the fact that Deku flew in that fight. It's my duty to help how I can. I'll do it! There's no, like, system of levers or pulleys you could concoct. Can you ask Baby's Girl? He's a good sport about it, though. It's still hard for you to shoot consecutively We've traded while moving beach training around. for forest training. I'm okay with that. All Might really is a natural-born hero, through and through. There's no doubt about it. Physically, at least, yeah. What is what is this? Whoopsie! The nice cat. There she is. Excellent. Ask her to make a system of pulleys and levers for your performance. To be seen out here with him? Don't worry about it. She knows too much. Oh my! You used a support item? How did I not know that? Well, yeah, but it was too bulky to be functional. I feel like Deku should know this because he'd have the action figure of it. I got rid of the tech and carried on with nothing but my own strapping body. I haven't seen that form in a while. <laughs> He just vomited blood into his suit. Just make sure you don't rely on it too much. Some people aren't able to hold their own after losing an item. That's solid advice. I've seen way too many heroes fall into that trap. Makes a lot of sense. I feel like there are a lot of metaphors here in this whole thing. Like, thinking back to my own life, just in high school, I felt like I had so much just raw energy and so many great, great things that were forming in terms of the way I thought and the way I could act and the things I could do. But it was so chaotic and so unfocused that while some of those things ended up being great for me and, you know, pushing me to, to new heights and who I wanted to be and things I could accomplish and discovering my self-identity, there are also a lot of ways where it was self-destructive and it was confusing what was what until much later with hindsight. And part of the long, long process of maturing that I'm still on is, is taking all those those raw things, even things that appear bad and like channeling them productively. You know, like I'm a, a big proponent of the idea that your greatest weaknesses can become your, your greatest strengths if properly applied. And also your greatest strengths can become your greatest weaknesses if improperly applied. Your greatest virtues can destroy you, much like Deku's greatest powers can destroy him. And his greatest weaknesses end up becoming points that he reflects on, which then perhaps have the potential to become even stronger virtues than his natural abilities, because they're purposely targeted. And Deku's a really great avatar for that process because he's so self-aware and self-reflective. He has a very clear goal, which started as All Might, right, but then shifted to, like, the hero that Deku wants to be, which for me is such a such a more powerful, beautiful thing because it's more more authentic to his natural gifts rather than something outside of him. And it's something like a fluid, organic process, right? It's always a moving target. You never quite arrived at like this perfect person. You always got to be vigilant so that you're able to break out of plateaus so that your strengths don't become weaknesses, etc. And Deku, with All Might's guidance, is constantly aiming higher. And I feel like the, the tech thing also plays into that because there are a lot of crutches that you can start to lean on along the way to enhance your life that end up sort of being counterproductive. You don't want to take an easier route if it compromises that journey you know, the journey of self-discovery. The immediate goal is sort of not the point. You know, getting to a certain point as quickly as possible is sort of not the point. It's about getting stronger and eliminating problems without creating new problems, which I feel like the tech might do. It's something that might hinder, hinder Deku's growth. Now then, let's get back to that visualization. Aw, this feels just like old times. It does, doesn't it? Mother sent me this rare type that can be impossible to find. It's a tea called Gold, Gold Tips, Imperial. Tips Imperial. The name of the episode. What's the connection between this tea and gentleman's tea? Hey Deku, aren't you going to try some of Momo's yummy tea? Someone has reported at some point. Very disappointed in you, Deku, for not something I have to. For not knowing about a support item. I didn't mean to play that. Gentle video. Oh, speaking of tea. Your discriminating taste sets you apart from the rest. 
<laughs> when you've gotten too deep into YouTube or YapTube. Is he famous? People don't seem to like him very much. I only kind of know who he is. Oh, so he's a 785. Did you see that like to dislike ratio? <laughs> not one person liked it. Not one. Seriously? That is an astounding, astounding like to dislike ratio. Perhaps he's hiding his subscriber number. It's kind of nuts that he's been putting out videos for years now, but hasn't been caught yet. I wonder what he's planning next. Probably just too small scale. He's doing things like stealing pudding and stuff. You've been working so hard that you've skipped tea breaks for a week. Are you all right? That's the life, man. So you want to be a YapTuber? Yeah, but gentle, I don't know how I feel about involving these innocent children in all of this, you know? You know they're not totally evil just because the, the sidekick has a heart. Now, let us go over the route we'll take to invade. We still don't know his quirk. That is a, a big game changer, potentially. Why not just use your quirk instead? It would be unwise given there are heroes who patrol the skies. What is your quirk, gentle? It's actually a charming cafe. You're not going to have your tea outside as usual? That's risky. Because this cafe carries the most lauded of tea leaves. Here's the, the connection. Elusive gold, gold tips, tips imperial. imperial. Little does he know there's already some at UA in the dorms. Most likely we'll have to deal with Hound Dog, who excels at sniffing out intruders. Once and we this get is to the, the hardest forest, challenge. We rub dirt and leaves over our bodies to hide our scent from the mongrel. If he smells you, he will give an inspirational speech and... That will just turn your whole life around, like it did for me. I love how this whole, like, eight-hour plan is before they get to the defense systems of UA. I also love how there's a scheduled tea time break. This is a villa that I would like to hang out with. And as for the school, there's right, a this is the actual security system right. called the UA Barrier. It's right. nigh impenetrable and covers the entirety of the campus. But maybe this is where his quirk where comes in. that's my job comes in, right, Gentle? I'll infiltrate UA's internal network and secretly oh. disable the sensors. She's got some kind of electronic quirk. She's R2-D2. When I first began... I learned how to upload my videos. The technology <laughs> oft eludes me. Alas, there were few views, tricky. and the rare comments I did get were harsh. It's only received 56 views. Oh my god. It's already been oh my god. I know. A month. I know the feeling. You think you think it's going to get a, a million views because that's just what you're used to on YouTube. That's what you're used to seeing on YouTube. It's not how it works. I hacked into your account to get your address. I can help you carve your name into history. This is different from my experience. <laughs> I've never had anyone uh, hack me and show up at my door for my for, for help for my videos. I am betting my soul and my prized mustache on this audacious festival scheme. Is he monetized? I feel like he's probably not. No matter what, we will succeed. I'm so torn because I want, <laughs> I want the kids to have a good festival. <laughs> but I... <laughs> I wanted to be successful in his YapTube career. He's got heart, man. It's not easy. In my first ever YouTube video on this channel that is long since been privated, I spent like a week on it and uploaded it and it got two views. And both of those people were me. And I just sat there looking at it like, how the hell? <laughs> how the hell like, are you supposed to do this? There are these frustrating problems sometimes in life that you want to escape and just, they just keep popping up everywhere. And one of them is the whole like, work thing of this is an entry position for which you need five years experience. You know what I mean? Anyone who's applied for, for jobs probably has, has seen that. It's like, how the hell am I supposed to get started when starting positions require experience? It's this weird circle. YapTube is not that different. Like, it's hard to know for sure because it's not exactly transparent and it's always changing, but pretty sure at least at one point, the way it worked was they limit the amount of people who see your video previews based on pre-existing metrics for your channel. So like, if you're just starting out, they'll maybe like, show it to one person or like 10 people or something like that. And if those people don't click on it, then YouTube's like, well, this is not for anyone. But if people do watch it, then the next video, they'll show it to those people and like another 20 or something like that. And so success has a way of snowballing, but like not success has a way of just being devastating and you just end up going nowhere. And there are ways around that, of course, like targeting really, really popular things, things for which there's just an incredibly high search volume. But I think a lot of people have that experience. You know, they're used to seeing a certain number on videos that they watch. And so when they start doing it themselves, that's their sort of anchor for what to expect and so to get like one view is a huge smack in the face for a lot of people and that's where you know perseverance comes in and like having grit to keep going even when you're down and stuff like that but in some ways i feel like it's tougher in this than it is in many other fields because your failure is public like anyone can come along and and see your channel and see that it has like five views and who knows what brings them there right but there, there are going to be people 
who come along who then use this this chance to kick you while you're down because you're an easy target and you know probably they have some bitterness about their own lives or whatever so they'll say hey your channel sucks <laughs> you know what i mean and you're already like feeling bad about it you're already like questioning yourself and then to eat this like kick in the teeth from this random stranger who gets to take this cheap shot at you it's a bitter pill to swallow it's a rare person i think that can stomach that kind of abuse and keep going forward especially when there's no guarantee of, of any kind of success there are no promises no one owes you anything it's incredibly competitive so i just like immediately respect gentlemen for watching him go through that and like he's still doing it you know and he's slowly eking out a space for himself even if you know his like to dislike ratio is terrible about la brava speaking of fortune tellers as well as youtube while in china i got my fortune read twice this is when i was just starting youtube and both people this is without me asking told me about my my career future and said that my endeavor would succeed but it would destroy my life rip apart my existing relationship and forge a bond with a new partner and all of that has come true in a certain sense except for the new the new partner thing and i'm not superstitious in that way i i believe in fortunes just as a way of like thinking about life right but that part i think about a lot i'm like i wonder if that'll come true i wonder if this will lead to some kind of partnership at some point but anyway that is the end of this episode where deku sort of got dumped on with this like pulling a thing but i'll see you next time when i presume we're, we're getting close to the start of this festival because season four is almost over mm -hmm.